Hello again, this is Clint from Killer Otaku Robots with another episode of Core Gaming. This is episode 4, and uh, the video game we're going to be covering here is Deus Ex Game of the Year Edition. This is going to be a quick little tutorial on how to get this game to run in 4K. As you can see here, um, it's not really the newest game. This game came out in 2000. And uh, the graphics are a tad lacking. I believe it was based off of the Half-Life engine, uh, Half-Life 1. And there are a number of things that are not particularly great about it. Um, faces, colors, and all that sort of stuff look pretty washed out. And the game is barely playable on modern, on modern hardware. Half the features are missing, and it just doesn't function very well. Now, when the game starts up, it'll ask you uh, what engine you want to use to render it. Uh, usually the 3DFX option won't show up. I have NGLIDE installed, and that's why it sees that. Um, this is actually a good way to do it if you just want to be really lazy. Th this will work. This will render it in uh, whatever you have NGLIDE set to. Um, but there are a number of glitches that show up, and it still doesn't look right. Um, but yeah, yeah, let's show you what it, uh, what it does with the normal code for Deus Ex. Now, this is designed for some very old graphics cards, uh, showing the Riva, TNT, the Age 128. I actually have one of these, I might do a video about that later. And, uh, yeah, some of the other cards here. But all of these are ancient cards from the 90s and don't really represent modern hardware. So, next, 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 run. And here's the game running. Uh, sometimes you can change the uh, resolution settings, but it doesn't tend to work very well. Right now, it's not even showing a resolution setting. Uh, Steam has already done a patch to make it run a little bit more normal, but it's still a little weird. And as you can see, it doesn't really let you. Uh, doesn't really let you change the resolution. Now the textures look kind of low, the shadow's a little weird, the reflections are way higher than they should be. But the game does run, um, and it is pretty much entirely playable in this state. So if you really wanted to, you didn't care about resolution or anything like that, you could play it like this. So let's do a little bit here, run through this quickly. Um, you might notice something moving around a little weird, but because I have a bit of a mouse glitch with the monitor setup I have. It's no fault of the game, it's fault of the software I have for my mouse. But yeah. You're going to get a lot of equipment during these exercises. Press F1 at any time to access the inventory screen, which will let you add and remove items from the tool belt. Press F2 to view your current goals and any notes you may decide, but the others contain things you might find useful. Pick up the lockpick and use it to open the door. Lockpicking takes ah. time and expends the self-assembling. Okay, yeah, this is one of the glitches here. Just be patient. Notice the input is a little training. finicky. That's just because the game is running far faster than it was ever designed. So I guess when I say it's uh, completely playable, I'm not 100% accurate on that. Still, the game runs. But yeah, this game does not look the best. And this is when it's fixed. It was even worse a couple years ago. Right. Now to show what to do to fix all this. Make it run a little bit better on modern hardware. So, most of this is done by two patches over at uh, kentai.net. Um, there are some high resolution packs you can add that do improve the quality a little bit, but overall I'd say they're not really worth it. So yeah, I'm just going to be covering these uh, these two packs from Kentai. So over at Kentai.net, he's got the Deus, Ex the Deus Ex EXE and uh, the Unreal Engine update. Yeah, this game's running Unreal, it's not running uh, Half-Life. So yeah, there's the Unreal Engine update, which will uh, render this game in DirectX 10. Um, design more for DirectX 11 and stuff like that, and it makes the lighting look a lot more uh, natural on a modern system. There's also a number of advanced uh, settings on this, so I'll go through that in a second here. So, it's pretty simple to do this. You just uh, download the file, 
This one is here. When they're done downloading, you uh, go to where the executable is stored. Now, that's pretty easy to find. Just right click on the game in Steam, go to properties. There'll be local files here. And there's a folder called browse local files. Click on that, it drops you right into the, uh, the data path for the game. Now, under here, there is a system directory. The system directory is where we're going to be placing all of our files. Um, we are going to be overwriting the exe here, so before we do that, it's probably best to uh, make a backup of it. So I'm just going to rename this to old. There we go, that's put in. So, let's open up the exe here. This is the new one. You just take that, drop it in. Now that that's installed, let's do the, uh, the graphics pack. So here we got um, the Unreal Engine code, and in here there's a folder here for Deus Ex. Go into that folder and the zip. So we take this and drag, drag and drop that in. There we go. And that's it. That's most of what you need to get it set up. There's a little bit extra here, but it's actually pretty simple. So you run the executable, and now this is a new launcher. Um, this also happens when you launch it from Steam as well. So if we go to play, it brings up this now. And what we want to do on here is configure it a little bit. Uh, I like to have this off because at 4K it makes it look very strange. Uh, enable this. I like the raw input that disables the mouse acceleration, makes the game run a little bit more normally. Uh, en enable direct sound, that'll fix a lot of the uh, sound glitches that you would normally get in the game. Leave the latency default, that should be fine. 32-bit color, uh, detailed textures. Make sure that there's a uh, limit for the frames per second. I have that set as 100, that should be fine. Um, if you're running, trying to run this at 144 hertz, like on a newer monitor, I would probably recommend not doing that. I would probably uh, have it set to 75 hertz or something like that. And uh, because if it starts running, if the game starts running above 100 frames per second, weird things start to happen. Like when I was trying to input the password on the data pad, it'll register clicks twice, and stuff like that. Uh, FOV will also tend to get weird, but uh, setting this up should fix that. This is basically how you get it to work right uh, when you're running it in widescreen. Now I have the resolution here set to 4K, but you can set this whatever you want. Um, full screen or window, they both work fine. And yeah, that's the majority of it right there. After that, you click play and everything should just start working. There we go, now we're running this game in 4K. Now there is one little thing here um, to add. It's a pretty easy trick to do. Press escape there to bring it up to this menu. Then click T to bring up say. You probably won't be able to see it because that's in 4K, it's super tiny. But you just backspace a bunch to clear that out. Type in preferences. I think I typed it in right. No, I did not. There we go. And that brings you up to the advanced options panel here. And inside here, there'll be a, a number of other options here you can use for the uh, for the display. No, not this one. Rendering Direct 3D 10. There we go. And here there's a number of settings here. Um, this is what I have set here. I have the anti-stroppy anti-aliasing set to 16. That tends to make things look a little bit better. And I have bump mapping enabled and some other stuff enabled. Um, most of the stuff doesn't really do that much. I would recommend leaving classic lighting off and uh, unlimited view distance off. That'll cause some weird glitches in games. Um, but the rest you can set to whatever you want. Yeah, that should be pretty much it for this game. Uh, it should run fine after this. Now let's run through a bit here and I'll show you how it works. Let's go back to training. And the lighting now looks a lot more natural. The reflections aren't as blown out. And uh, the textures don't look as, as blocky. Open the door by clicking the right mouse button. The right button uses items in the world. Lighting looks more normal. The key on the desk opens encryption based nanotech locks. When you pick it up, it will automatically be added to your key ring. And it runs better with modern mouses. You can also see there's some additional lighting effects. You're going to 
get a lot of equipment during these exercises. Press F1 at any time to access the inventory screen, which will let you add and remove items from the tool belt. Press M. Use the disposable multi-tools on the table to hack the keypad up ahead. A multi-tools resource is so yes, even though the textures haven't really been updated at all, the game looks a lot better. The manual describes other uses for the there are texture packs, but they don't really add that much. Okay, and now I'll show you what it's like if you run this with the uh, with the HD packs installed. I have these linked in the settings, and uh, yeah, the only tip I'd really give here because it's actually pretty easy to install these, is uh, under under the data directories option, you can choose which one is loaded first. I like having uh, HDTP, then New Vision, and then the Game of the Year textures. The rest of the settings are basically the same. And when you load this, the textures look a little be better. By now. Hopefully our but exercises will it's be more still... Looks like a 15 year old game. There's really not much you can do about that. Lock the door and proceed to the next area. You're going to get a lot of equipment during these exercises. Press F1 at any time to access the inventory screen, which will let you add and remove items from the tool belt. Press F2 to view your current mm, goals. That's sexy for a decide to take. On a typical mission, a UNATCO agent's objectives are logged electronically so that he can stay on task at all times. Now, the texture pack does improve things, but kind of makes everything have this kind of like a cardboard feel. Everything looks like it's made of cardboard. Maybe I'm just seeing things on that, but there's little visible lines on everything. Good work. I'll get someone down there immediately to revive Private Winslow. Yep, and that's pretty much up for this for this game. There's a couple extra notes in the, uh, the the notes for this YouTube video, as well as on my website, kor.ninja. If uh, there's any questions you have, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, if you liked the video, give it a like. If you disliked it, give it a dislike. Uh, subscribe if you want to see more. And uh, yeah, that should be about it. May the mecha be with you.